Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today's video I think is a fun one. I'm really excited to film it based purely on curiosity alone. This video is entirely inspired by Haley's video, which is very similar. I watched it, thought it was so cool and wanted to recreate it myself. And that is looking at the best books I have read according to Goodreads. Essentially, I'm gonna be looking at my entire red shelf on Goodreads and filtering by average rating um, and seeing what the highest rated book I've technically ever read and then see if I agree with that or not. I'm really curious to see if my personal all-time faves will make the super high ranking. I also feel like average rating on Goodreads can feel a little bit like a popularity contest, so we shall see. I do have a few stipulations I've decided to add on to this and that is I'm not going to include sequels. I feel like I read a lot of series and sequels also tend to be heavily weighted in the positive direction because obviously if you liked book one, you're probably going to like book five. So I'm just going to be focusing on either standalones or first books in a series. That being said though, let's go to my red shelf on Goodreads and see see what's going on. So I have a total of 865 red books on Goodreads, if that means anything to anyone. And I would say yes, right off the bat, just quickly scrolling through. Predominantly sequels are kind of crowding the top of the list. But I will say the number one highest rated book that I have read on my personal Goodreads is Brandon Sanderson, The Way of Kings, which is book one to the Stormlight Archives. And I 100% stand by this. I've given this book five stars in the two different times I've read it. The Stormlight Archives is one of my all-time favorite epic fantasy series. It's full of a huge cast of characters, a sweeping world full of war and destruction, incredible magic, and just really fantastic character arcs that I have adored reading and consuming numerous times. My literal Goodreads review is just, ugh. OMG, five stars. So I will say I'm actually really pleased to see that. I wasn't sure what the book with the highest average rating was going to be, but I stand by the way of Kings. And just a side note, the book with the highest average rating is Words of Radiance, which is Stormlight book two, which is my favorite Stormlight book. So. I'm also okay with that. Skipping a bit down, the next book that has a super high rating is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is another book I actually gave five stars to. I read this book in 2016, so it has been a minute. This book also has a whopping 942,059 ratings and with an average of 4.59, that is truly wild. I do remember reading this and loving it quite a bit at the time. I feel like I recommend this book relatively frequently too. It's a World War II historical fiction story following two sisters. Um, it's predominantly set in France and these two sisters have kind of a strained relationship and are also kind of surviving and navigating the occupation of France during this time in very different ways. It is a World War II drama but it is very emotional and I do really appreciate that it has much more of a female perspective which I find to be rare when it comes to these types of stories. I liked The Nightingale. I wouldn't necessarily say it's the second best book I've ever read, but I will say it's a good book. I am not mad that it has such a high rating. All right, next on the list is The Name of the Wind or King Killer Chronicle book one by Patrick Rothfuss. This has an average rating of 4.52, a whopping 829,544 reviews. Another very classic high fantasy story and one that I also loved quite a bit at the time when I read it in 2015. It's been a while now. I'm not sure if it would hold up to the same rating as I gave it then nowadays, just because I have read so much more epic fantasy since initially encountering the story, but I do appreciate structurally how this book is written. It's kind of told as a tale from the future as our main character, Kovoth, is kind of reflecting back on his life and you follow him through magic school and a lot of his trials and tribulations. But a huge issue with this series has nothing to do with like the writing itself. It's the pure length that we have been waiting for the third book. And I feel like with every year, I look at this series with like less favor it's kind of slipping down my list of favorites and it's i'm getting a little resentful you know what i mean next is one that i think is a little bit surprising mostly because i've honestly been skipping through some of my favorite series but again they've been books two three four five um but the next first book in a series i'm encountering is actually skyward by brandon sanderson which has an average rating of 4.5 again and this also has a lot of ratings of 101,081. 
Um, I like Skyward. It is, I think, a very solid YA sci-fi story following our main character who basically wants to be a pilot, but because her father was a deserter on this planet, she's kind of ostracized. But then one day she stumbles upon a very big secret and she's let into pilot school. This book is very intense. Um, I think the writing is really good. Obviously, Brandon Sanderson, very talented, one of my favorite authors. But Skyward, again, just like isn't it wouldn't be in like my top 10. It wouldn't even be in like my top five Sanderson books. So it's interesting that it's like The Way of Kings and then Skyward in terms of book one rankings from a pure Goodreads rating review point of view. Interesting, interesting. I would not put that there. It's a good book but it's not better than Mistborn. It's not better than Elantris. It's not better than Warbreaker. You know what I mean? The next three books are all like incredibly popular titles, like quintessential YouTube book talk book. So many people have read them. So many people have loved them. Again, this video almost feels a bit like a popularity contest, which is interesting because I either feel like you either have a bunch of ratings, which would give you a really high review, or if you don't have very many, you could also just like from pure game of averages, very high average rating as well. But next we have Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. An average rating of 4.49 with 652,953 ratings. Another beloved book. I like Six of Crows quite a bit. It's definitely, in my opinion, one of the best YA fantasy duologies out there. I love a heist. I love multi-POV. And we have House of Earth and Blood, Crescent City 1. This has 261,820 ratings with an average rating of 4.48. Uh, I'm horrified to say that this is not the first Sarah J Maas book I've had to skip down. Um, obviously, I've read a lot of her books and a lot of them I find to be very entertaining, but this would technically put this book in the top 10 best books I've ever read. And that is just simply incredibly untrue. It's not even the best Sarah J Maas book I've ever read. Not even close. I also feel like because I gave the sequel to this series one star, the fact that this has such a high rating um, feels a little strange. It's giving me a little bit of heartburn, you know, so we're just gonna move on. And then the last of that very hyped trio is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And this has an average rating of 4.48 with 1 million, oh my gosh, 1,089,743 ratings, which is so many. I love this book. This book is so hyped. I mean, so many people have read it, but when I first read it, I want to say two years ago, honestly, I found it to be really gripping. I loved the old Hollywood setting. I loved our main character, Evelyn Hugo. I love that she was kind of recounting and claiming back her own life story and narrative. I loved the dresses. I loved the glamour. I loved the queerness of the story too. And I thought it was really emotional and really impactful. I really enjoyed Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing quite a bit. I think it's entertaining. The next book that pops up is actually a book I for sure gave five stars. I don't know if it's necessarily in my top 10, but it is a book I love a lot. So I stand by the five star rating and it's probably one of the best nonfiction books I've ever read. I've never been more engrossed in a story and an audiobook. The audiobook to this is incredible and that is Educated by Tara Westover. This book has an average rating of 4.47 and also has, wow, 1,149,911 ratings. So a lot of people have read and enjoyed this book um, and I stand by my five-star rating. Generally, it's really good. This is a memoir following our author as she recounts her life growing up in a very religious and survivalist center family. She's grown up in a very isolated home, stockpiling, preparing for the end of the world. She's also never formally educated. And this memoir kind of recounts a lot of her childhood, her family life, and also ultimately her pursuit to actually get education and reflecting a lot on her childhood experiences through a new lens. This book is absolutely captivating. It is harrowing and at many times difficult to read, but it's truly one of those situations. It just, it's like stranger than fiction. Like it's hard to imagine this life existing, but it very much does. And the author shares her own experience through this memoir. It's so Good. All right, here we are. The next book is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. I read this for the first time in 2013. Oh my gosh, it's almost been 10 years. Um, I gave this book five stars. I said, wow, period, that, period, was, period, really, period, good, period. I don't know why you're not following me on Goodreads because my reviews there are stellar. <laughs> this book has an average rating of 4.46 with 507,644 ratings. Mistborn, one of my favorite trilogies of all time. I definitely rank it above Skyward and it is very firmly in my top 10 favorite fantasy series. So I feel honestly very comfortable that this is so high on my personal 
personal list, my best books according to Goodreads. But if you're not familiar, Mistborn is a fantasy trilogy set in a world where the bad guy has won and has a really cool magic system which centers around the consumptions of metal. Each metal has a different property and ability and people called Mistborn are very powerful because they can consume all of them. It's very rare. You follow a ragtag group of individuals trying to overthrow the Dark Lord in book one. It's great, great characters, great magic, a great time one of my favorite trilogies. Next is The House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I support it. I gave that book five stars. I really feel like when this book came out, which was 2020, we all needed a book like this. This is really heartwarming, um, a really beautiful story about second chance and found family. And yeah, I support this being so beloved because Again, it was needed. Then we have Amari and the Night Brothers um, by B.B. Alston, which is a new middle grade fantasy series, which I also gave five stars. So honestly, a lot of these books I clearly am aligning with in terms of thinking that they're very good, but Amari and the Night Brothers also made my top middle grade list. It's such a fun series following a young girl who joins this burrow of supernatural affairs in hopes of finding her lost brother. It's full of magic and mischief and so much fantasy. It's delightful, I can't wait for book two. In case you were having any amount of faith in Goodreads average rating, I do wanna just mention I've skipped over Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, Blood and Ash book two, which has an average rating of 4.45, I gave it a two star. So we have Our Violent Ends by Chloe Gong, which has an average rating of 4.48, I gave it two and a half stars. And before you call me your Sarah J Maz hater, I did give A Court of Mist and Fury, which is one of the top rated books on Goodreads, which has an average rating of 4.61, a five stars when I read it for the first time in 2016. Here's the deal. I did read this book while on vacation in Mexico when I had a raging fever and couldn't leave my hotel room. It was my only life raft. It completely entertained me. I never want to reread it because that ex it was the only thing keeping me alive at that point. And for that, I am grateful. Alrighty, we're going to do two more and then wrap this video up. The next one is another one I love. Honestly, like I guess the experiment is for the most part, I agree with a lot of the best books. I don't know again if these would be in my top 10 list like of all time, but they're all for the most part, the ones that are generally highly rated. I also enjoy, maybe I'm just basic like that. But the next one is A Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. This is the first book that has a low, low, low amount of ratings, but a high average rating. So not a popularity contest here. More people need to read this book. This has an average rating of 4.45 and only 9,060 ratings. What are you doing, people? You need to pick this book up. I gave it five stars. One of the best standalone fantasy novels I've ever read. The story is absolutely incredible. It is a dual perspective story following a mother and a son. It centers motherhood in one of the best ways possible I've ever encountered in fantasy. The story also centers elemental magic and combat and has some of the most complex sort of political situations um, that I've really read in fantasy. It's really a fully realized fantasy world and setting in a singular novel. It is intense, brutal, bloody, emotional, one of the best fantasy books I have ever read. The last book that is on my list according to Goodreads is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare, The Last Hours, book one. I read this in 2020. It has an average rating of 4.44. I gave it four stars. So technically, there's other books I would put ahead of this one, but I will say the sequel five out of five stars. I do love The Last Hour series by Cassandra Clare. Again, not like the top 10 book I've ever read, but like some of the most entertaining YA fantasy I've ever read for sure. And this is another very popular one with 74,549 ratings. The Last Hour series is a continuation of the Shadowhunter world. It's set kind of at the turn of the century in London. We follow a variety of Shadowhunter characters who are not only having to deal with the propriety of the time and pursuing their daily life and romance, but also have to face down demons and protect London and their family from monsters. This book is just angsty. Cassandra Clare is so good at creating new and fascinating scenarios, keeping characters apart, and it's addicting. I've honestly read so many Cassandra Clare books and I've never gotten tired of any of the storylines. It doesn't feel so repetitive to me and the characters are very dynamic and very lovable, which I can't say the same for all authors who write many installments in many fantasy worlds, if you get my drift. I love the Last Hour series very, very much. Those are the best books I've ever read according to Goodreads. Some of them I definitely really loved. Some of them I really enjoyed. I don't know if most of them would technically make my list. I mean, there was no Robin Hobb 
And to me, that just feels incredibly wrong. Some other authors I would definitely include would be like Rick Riordan. Where's Rick? I saw some Hero of Olympus books on there, but it was like books four and five, but like, where are the rest of them? N.K. Jemisin, where is she at? The Book Thief, Cindy Williams Chima, The Thief series by Megan Wallen Turner. I'm just like looking at all my bookshelves. I'm like, what would make my list? I don't know. But nonetheless, I thought this was really interesting and let me know if you guys enjoyed. I also am really curious to see what books I've read that are the lowest rated or the worst according to Goodreads. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below the highest rated book you have read according to Goodreads as I would love to know. And I will see you guys soon with another video soon. Goodbye.